I don't think many people expected the Chiefs to perform the way they have in 2021. After the Super Bowl, you know, maybe there was set to be a little bit of regression. The offensive line really held Patrick Mahomes out to dry. But in the offseason, the Chiefs did a lot to try and create a better and revamped offensive line that brought in Creed Humphrey, star center out of Oklahoma, Trey Smith, who was one of the best linemen in the entire draft, who slipped until the sixth round, I want to say, because of medical red flags that included like blood clots and a bunch of crazy things, but really, really good player when he was on the field. And they traded for Orlando Brown Jr. Their tackles have not performed up to the expectation, I think, in general. Like, Niang hasn't been awesome, and Orlando Brown Jr. hasn't been awesome. But the interior certainly has been awesome. But uh, let's go ahead and turn this Chiefs team from fighting for a playoff spot in the AFC to best team in the AFC, best team in the NFL. I think we can do it. We had a lot to work with. Let's talk about the roster. Now, if you hadn't followed the 2021 season, you'd think I was talking about the Chiefs like they're below 500. However, they are barely over 500, and they've been winning a few games recently in order to get to that position, including their most recent win over the Green Bay Packers without Aaron Rodgers. In a game, they only scored 13 points. That's a thing. But uh, of course, I did start from the real life section. When you do online franchise, there are two options. And this has all the real life record uh, records, all the real life stats, things like that. And that gives me a good segue into my new draft class. EA does this cool thing where they will delete my draft class and other people's files as well. Uh, every time I upload it, it'll just disappear over time. And then I can't update the most downloaded file on the entirety of PS5, which is really, really awful. But uh, yeah. This is the draft class. I've made a number of changes to development, trait, to overall, to adding new players in. Like, you know, some players are rising up draft boards quite a lot, like David Ojabo, I think, are, are a good example of that. And Devin Lloyd is new ILB1, technically, but I have N'Kobe Dean listed at outside linebacker, and, you know, we'll see. What EA and Madden need to do is get rid of outside linebacker and or right end and left end and left outside linebacker and right outside linebacker and D-tackle, right? Make interior defensive lineman, edge rusher, linebacker, which will encapsulate all off-ball linebackers, cornerbacks, safety, no more free safety, strong safety, and the same thing on offense, no more left tackle, right tackle, just have tackle. And then no more left guard, center, right guard. Just have interior offensive line. I mean, maybe guard can stay, but center... May, yeah, like, I don't know. It's weird. For like actual prospect scouting, it's referred to as interior offensive line. But you do have the knowledge of which guys are going to play center versus guard. So maybe you can still separate guard and center, but it, at least just have that. I don't have left guard and right guard, okay? And then the rest is obviously fine. But... We can't have all these different weird grouping positions anymore. But uh, yeah, things have been updated. A lot of things have been moved around, changed. Players have been added, things of that nature. So it's 2022 NFL Draft Bengal. The PSN is Gene Dangus. And I'll show you how it looks in the Madden share. But this thing is terrible. It takes forever to load. Most often, you just get disconnected. You can't download. You can't upload. There's so many problems. Sometimes it's better outside of the franchise menu and actually in the main menu of the game. Oftentimes it's not. But this file, I cannot upload it. Do you realize that like every single most downloaded class in here was added previously uh, or before 9.4 essentially? The most recent one after that is 10.19 and that only has less than 5,000 downloads. The reason is because these were uploaded and then deleted from the individual file share of each user. Like usually it would say added whenever you update it because you could constantly update it if you wanted to and it would still be the same file name. Doesn't work anymore. So now I, I think I have this one that I updated in uh, October and now there's a new one for November that you guys are going to want to use.
but let's talk about this team Ooh, trey smith is up to a 76 we like to see that now why would kyle long be starting over him i have no idea i have no idea uh, orlando brown jr is going to be an 82 that's kind of nice but he's got to be better in pass bro absolutely has to be so I move Kyle Long to center just to get him out of the way. I'm going to start Trey Smith at right guard. And he had a history of playing tackle at Tennessee too. So I could certainly do that at some point. It's going to be a really good tackle to have. And I might do that after we re-sign him long term. But he's a rookie. So that's not going to be for a couple of years. I could just move him to tackle. So I might do that. But Niang has star dev. So I'm really interested in seeing if we can develop him. Because there is something to work with there. But it might not be the best move long term of course Tyreek Hill Nicole Hardman we got Demarcus Robinson who's going to be a free agent got to upgrade at receiver three I know Josh Gordon exists it's not 2012 right it's not 2013 where Josh Gordon's like oh my goodness this new great receiver like he was a rookie in 2012 I want to say I think he led the league in receiving yards was it 2013 I think it was yeah led the league in receiving yards in 2013 he had 1,646 yards. Now, from 2014 to this season right now, he has 1,812. So from 2014 to 2021, he had right around his highest yardage for his career, which is 2013. It's been a brutal career for Josh Gordon, obviously, with a ton of you know mental and substance abuse abuse issues really sad really sad but uh that's just the way it is man and we got to do a lot better than that of course patrick mahomes arguably is still the best quarterback in the league his uh hero ball is kind of caught up to him a little bit with more turnover worthy plays but he's still unbelievable and still amazing certainly don't need to do anything there clyde edward delaire should be fine at rb1 and then defensively, this is where we have the problem. And we have a lot of problems. One, there's nothing on this team that really generates any pressure. Now, it's listed as a 4-3, but Chris Jones is playing defensive end here, which I'll be honest, if you've watched Chris Jones play, he's not a defensive end in a 4-3. He's an interior defensive lineman, and he's one of the best in the league. At defensive end, he's not quite there. He just isn't. He's not going to be an edge rusher for me. I'm going to move him around. Jaron Reed, Derek Nottie, they're fine. They're not great, but they're fine. Nottie's 25. I'll probably opt to go with him over Jaron Reed, who is 27 and should be an expiring contract. And Chris Jones will come back over to D-tackle. Melvin Ingram, super old at this point. Maybe, like what, 33, 32. Just signed. Listen. He can still be productive. I think he's going to help this team down the stretch for sure. I think this is a playoff team, but the back end is not ideal. We got to be better at corner. We're going to try and develop Mike Hughes, Legereus needs school. But this issue in real life is horrible. Daniel Sorensen is maybe the worst cover safety in the league, and he just keeps getting thrown out there to die. It's horrible. It's really, really awful. And uh, they just don't trust Juan Thornhill and run defense. But that can't be a better alternative with Daniel Sorensen. At least Juan Thornhill can cover. Even if you don't value him as a physical run defender type player, he is better than Daniel Sorensen. Please, just you have to be better. Linebackers aren't great. Willie Gay's played better in recent weeks. And then Anthony Hitchens, Dorian O'Daniel, we, Nick Bolton, maybe we will uh, end up starting at left outside linebacker. But we just got to do better. And we're going to develop these guys. I think it's not going to be too hard of a rebuild, but the emphasis is on defense big time and then filling in some of the gaps. So that feels like a really long intro, but there's a lot to talk about with this team. Oh yeah, Frank Clark. God, hard to find a worse contract in the league. I, I mean, he's going to get cut by me, if not by the Chiefs. The focus players I'm going to choose are Drake Jackson from USC, David Ajabo from Michigan, and Jordan Battle from Bama. Two edge rushers and a safety. I think that is a you know a huge point of emphasis for the Chiefs in the offseason, or it should be at least, and it, I think it will be. So those are my focus players. It shouldn't matter too much with a real-life draft class. I'm basing it more off of knowledge of the players so far in real life versus who they are 
uh, in the video game land. Because th let's be honest, the new scouting is horrible. Just going to pu put that out there. So we actually didn't make the playoffs. Three teams in the AFC West went 9-8. and eight, And it is the Raiders that get out and not us, unfortunately. Tom Brady put up very good numbers, although... Less than what he's on pace for in real life, which is insane. Derrick Henry is healthy in this land, and Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson went off. Two LSU receivers, and then what's Cooper Cup? Eastern Washington? Yeah, one of these things is not like the other. Powerhouses of the SEC, you know, well, not the LSU has been great this year. And then Eastern Washington. Patrick Mahomes did end the season with very respectable numbers, over 4,600 yards, 37 touchdowns, did have 16 picks. Clyde Edwards-Alaire didn't really get the football too often, wasn't that productive. And then receiving Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey ended up with very good numbers of their own. Defensively, Nick Bolton had a bunch of tackles, including 10 for loss, which led the team. And then Chris Jones had 10 and a half, nine for Melvin Ingram, five for Frank Clark, four interceptions by Willie Gay led the team. We're going to change some things around. This is not going to be a team that misses the playoffs routinely. I will not allow it. it. Just won't happen. I would also like to remind you to use code Bengal on SeatGeek. Save yourself $20 when you buy tickets for anything. I know we're still in a pandemic, but if you are going to be going anything, it's a great segue. Uh, use code Bengal. Save yourself $20. Concerts, baseball, football, basketball, any ticket you could imagine. Code Bengal, 20 bucks off on your first purchase. Might as well, right? 2021 season recap has the Browns winning the Super Bowl over the Cowboys, and Tom Brady wins MVP. Khalil Mack, Defensive Player of the Year. Najee Harris, Offensive Rookie of the Year. And Aziz Ojolari with your Defensive Rookie of the Year. So, linebacker is also a focus. We talked about outside linebacker and safety. Inside linebacker is also something I'm going to think about. And I think we'll probably stay in a 4-3. Yeah, I think we probably will. It's just going to be about moving Chris Jones, doing something with Jaron Reed, or Jaron it is, I learned. Jaron Reed. Let's look at a mock draft with the new draft class in here as the Lions take Matt Corral number one, Kayvon Thibodeau to the Texans at two, the Giants at number three take Kyle Hamilton. As much of a great player as I think Kyle Hamilton is, if the Giants were to take a safety at number three overall, given their other needs, I would lose it. But he's a great player, so it's a very interesting argument there. But I don't think a safety impacts the game the same way that a tackle does or an edge rusher does in the case of the Giants. I'd much rather an Evan Neal at that spot or an Aiden Hutchinson. And then you're talking about some other tackles, Zika McQuanu, Trevor Penning, other edge rushers, maybe even, uh, not that you take him at number three, but George Karloftis. Let's see what else, though. Jets take Derek Stingley. Eagles go Evan Neal. Aiden Hutchinson to the Jags, DeMarvin Leal to Washington football team, Garrett Wilson to the Steelers. They love their receivers. I could definitely see the Steelers avoiding a more important position for their team. That makes sense. I, listen, I get it with Juju and, you know, James Washington, and you need some other receivers. At this point, if you're picking top 10, take a quarterback, take a tackle, please. Do, do something. Traylon Burks to Philadelphia with one of their few picks. I think they should have another one wherever the Colts end up. They do. Um, Charles Cross to Miami. Would love to see them take offensive line help, although I think it would be more likely an interior offensive lineman, maybe a center. But at number 10, that's kind of tough to say. Karloftis to Denver. Like that for them. It's your Von Miller replacement, potentially. Chris Olave to Buffalo. That'd be really fun with Josh Allen. Not sure that's the biggest of needs for them, but wouldn't hate it. Drake London to Cincinnati hate this a lot they should not be taking a receiver at all canyon green to minnesota they seem like they always need an offensive lineman and you take one that can play tackle as well why not right they don't really need a tackle they could use interior so i, I don't hate that the kobe dean to the giants don't see the giants taking a linebacker because they never do but i would like it the kobe dean is awesome Ika mcquanu to the panthers kair elam to the chiefs so we're at number 17 Sam Howell, Jordan Davis. I mean, that's the best fit for the Chargers. They need interior defensive linemen more than any other team in the draft. Trayvon Walker to the Raiders. That feels like a really good fit for them. Andrew Booth Jr. to the Eagles. 
There goes Tyler Linderbaum to Atlanta. Devin Lloyd to the Jets. Trevor Penning to Green Bay. Just feels like a good fit with, uh, you know, that Midwest type like, area, like North. It just seems like the Packers would be taking a Northern Iowa offensive lineman. Drake Jackson, you get your Chandler Jones understudy. And Chandler Jones is going to be a free agent too. So maybe you get your replacement. And especially with JJ Watt's health, you could use some more pass rushers. Ahmad Gardner to Baltimore. David Ajabo goes to the Bucks. Roger McCreary to Tennessee. Kenneth Walker to the Patriots. That'd be real interesting. Wouldn't recommend that. Jamison Williams to Detroit. Desmond Ritter to the Cowboys. No. Why would they take a first round QB? They got a top five QB probably in Dak. It's terrible. And then Nicholas Petit Frere stays in Ohio going from Columbus to Cleveland. Yeah, it's great, except they don't need tackle at all. Jack Conklin, Jedrick Wills, they have maybe the best offensive line in football. Why would they do that? That's terrible. Some tough decisions to make in free agency here as, well, I guess prior to free agency. Tyra Matthew, Melvin Ingram is done. No thanks. Orlando Brown Jr., just because of age development overall, it would make way too much sense to keep him. We're going to let Reed go. I want to keep Derek Nottie. I want to keep Mike Hughes. I think that's it. I'm not even going to talk about DeAndre Baker. I could have a hundred things to say. Tyron Matthew is still one of the best safeties in the league. You think he sucks because of the rest of the Chiefs defense if you were stupid. Uh, but he's amazing and he wants to play for a new team. It's not going to happen. I will franchise tag him. And Derek Nottie is back along with Mike Hughes and Orlando Brown Jr. Yeah, I just don't think I want anybody else. We're going to franchise tag Tyron Matthew now. We have to keep him. We have to keep him. It's a lot of money, but we'll renegotiate. And I don't want to risk him going to any other team. Had to be done. Some big retirements, by the way. Uh, Andrew Whitworth, Calais Campbell, Antonio Brown, Ejax, Richie Incognito, Dwayne Brown. I mean, some huge ones, especially in the trenches. Alex Mack, Jason Kelsey. I mean, you're talking about some of the best centers in the league over the past decade. Jason Peters. Not that he's not ready for that, but a lot of big retirements. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Toronto Armstead would be cool, but it, we don't have the finances to be able to make that happen. What do I really want here? I want the best safety. That's not going to happen. We're going to draft one in round two, maybe. Or at the back end of round one, depending on what's there. A corner. We could use corner. Carlton Davis makes just too much sense because he's 25, man. That probably should try and make that happen. Inside linebacker, Chris Barnes. I sign him in every single video. I don't think that's true. Yeah, you know, I'm going to sign him. All right, big free agency. We're now to available salary cap zero. I don't think I've ever had exactly zero before. We're, there's just no money that exists. That's all, all gone. But Chris Barnes... Carlton Davis, big time additions to the defense. I wanted to address safety and edge rusher. I'm doing that in the draft. Willie Gay now has star dev. We have Nick Bolton. I'm cool with linebacker, right? What I'm not cool with is edge rusher. I do like Colin Saunders, by the way. We didn't talk about him. And listen, even to Sean Wharton, like the Chiefs just find these young small school defensive tackles now recently it seems like and they're just good players like colin saunders is what western illinois like and he's a freak athlete he does back handsprings and things he's six foot 330 he's doing backflips it's insane but they're also not gonna play did i mention that they're not gonna play because chris jones and derek naughty will be my starting inside defensive lineman starting interior defensive lineman and they are not small school guys mississippi state and what's not a florida state so those are not small schools at all sec and acc and we have no edge rushers frank clark oh, whoops my finger slipped i'm just gonna eat it now i'm gonna eat the cap penalty he sucks he is getting paid like he's tj watt it's not happening it's not happening now, that does clear up a lot of space, by the way, but we also do take on quite a large cap penalty. It basically will end up canceling itself out, but we don't have to pay him anymore, and I want 
my edge rushers. And I want him badly. So Drake Jackson, it didn't work, I don't think. Um, because the game's broken. Uh, David Ojabo, still 50% completion. Um, none of it worked. What's the point, you ask, if, if everything in the game is broken and nothing works? And you know what? It's a really good question. I would counter with, oh, the game sucks. Hey, it worked for Jordan Battle, though. Yay. NFL Draft Time Lions are at number one. Do I want to potentially trade up? Well, I'm not going to trade up into like top five or anything. That's just not going to happen. But what player would I potentially want to move up for? George Karloftis, maybe? Maybe. I think I'm fine at tackle. I'm not going to be doing that. Maybe... Drake Jackson? Trayvon Walker? David Ajabo. I think those are our options. I think Ajabo, Walker, Jackson. I think those are my main targets. And then potentially look safety in round two if we can. It's not a really like top end safety class. Like, oh, maybe, maybe it's showing the completion now. Do we have 80% on some of these free safeties? Oh, no, I just did that. Okay, never mind, never mind. It didn't work for the linebackers. But um, it's not like a, a crazy high top-end safety class. I think it's pretty well agreed upon at this point in time that Kyle Hamilton's the clear number one, and then the rest are kind of scratching to potentially get in the first-round conversation between Jordan Battle, Jaquan Brisker, Daxton Hill, Jalen Catalan, Lewis Seen. Brandon Joseph stock has kind of went down a bit. Veron McKinley's just not quite there. None of these other strong safeties are really in that conversation. Just going to simulate to number 17, and we are on the clock. Here we go. What is available? George Karloftis is available. Well, I'm just going to do that then. I don't think you have a player like this fall into your lap and you don't take him. Of course, I'm going off of my knowledge as George Karloftis is a player and not what he looks like in the game because scouted, you know, he's not, we don't know anything about him. But we're going to go ahead and take George Karloftis. Does have star better development. With Karloftis, you're not getting the craziest, most twitchy athlete of all time, but he just does everything right. Really technically sound, strong, powerful hands, good placement, and just a real innate ability to get after the quarterback. He's going to work really well. I have no issue with him playing 4-3 defensive end, which is what we're going to stay in. I think he's going to work out really, really well. And the value there is just too good to pass up as Sam Howell goes to the New Orleans Saints. Round two, Christian Harris went the pick before. What are we looking at? Jaquan Brisker. I've taken him a couple times, I think. I don't want to do that. Jordan Battles here. Oh, plenty of good safeties. Devin Lloyd's here if I want to go out and get a really good... Uh, off the ball linebacker we still need help on the edge as well but i think this probably should be a safety i'm liking jordan battle with this one i'm liking jordan battle oh that we don't need we don't need a safety we don't need a safety only the real life chiefs need a safety in game we're fine in game we have Juan thornhill and tyre matthew the real life chiefs need a safety if they don't trust Juan thornhill in game i'm fine i was just gonna talk myself into taking a position I really didn't even need it. I gotta, I gotta take myself out of real life and stop living in the real world and go back to fantasy land. Devin Lloyd, maybe? Or, or what I could do is just take another edge rusher. Arnold Ebicades here. His name is not allowed in Sim, so it has to be close. Or in, in Madden. Um, Logan Hall is getting a lot of hype out of Houston. Similarly to the way Peyton Turner did last year. I see the clock as well, by the way. Isaiah Foskey's real good, putting up crazy sack numbers. Jermaine Johnson, one of the best senior pass rushers. Adam Anderson. I'm talking myself into an edge rusher. The fact that all these guys are available is kind of wild right now. Let's go with Jermaine Johnson. Was on last chance of you at Independence. Went to Georgia, transferred to Florida State. And I'm hoping some of you are getting nervous with that clock. But I'm going to take him with two seconds left. He also has star or better development as we double dip on edge rushers here. And it's the right move. I think it's the right move. 
really, really good player. Like Jermaine Johnson a lot. Again, one of the best senior pass rushers in the nation. It probably goes Aiden Hutchinson one, and then Jermaine Johnson two, maybe? It's close up there. As Brees Hall goes to the Saints, just completely revamping that offense. You don't need to. You have Kamara, Henry Toa Toa to Carolina going after their next Luke Keekley, maybe, in the Tennessee transfer. Lewis Seen's here. What do I want? I'm not really going to take another edge rusher. What do I want? Um, Still a bunch of really good players available. We could go receiver, you know. There's still some good receivers available. Justin Ross, if you want a potential high potential guy. Eric Ezukama. Dante Demas, I like a lot. Got injured. What can we develop here? You know, there's not really a receiver like Justin Ross or Eric Ezekama on the roster right now for Kansas City. So let's take one of them. Let's go with... Let's go with Justin Ross. You know, crazy, crazy, crazy talent. Some really big injury concerns and production hasn't been there this year. But we're going to take Justin Ross. Only normal development. There are some medical red flags for sure. But the talent is certainly there. I remember he is is quite good. And I think a really good option at receiver three on this team. So we'll go into round four. As a camera is still available. What could I take here? Amari Barno was sick in like week one or two. He's a good player too. Brian Robinson would be good at running back depth and offer us a power back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Devin Lloyd is still available. Why is he dropping? Do I have multiple Devin Lloyds in the draft class and I made a mistake? I guess there's potential for that. I guess I'll take him and find out. Got normal dev. This could have been this could have been a big mistake for me. I'm gonna get that fixed right away. Yep, I have two Devin Lloyds. I have the good Devin Lloyd, and then I have the one that I drafted. Only as normal dev in this. Not everyone could have star better, and, and things will change across the course of the year. But I unfortunately have two Devin Lloyds, and I didn't even realize it. So, got to make that change. I decided to replace Devin Lloyd with Channing Tindall from Georgia, who's played quite well this year in that superstar defense. And, um, yeah, I think that's a good fit. I've been meaning to add him to the class anyway. And I, I will be continuing to make changes, and I'll still update that while I can under the same file name. But I'm sure it'll be deleted again. And just look for the PSN Gene Dangus. And, again, I will make a lot of updates. CPU drafted Michael Penix Jr., he not going to have star dev in the next update, I'll tell you that. I'm going to try Justin Ross in the slot. I'm just going to work as a big slot, and that'll be really effective in the playbook. He's receiver three right now, but I think he has crazy potential in the NFL. Doesn't mean he'll ever achieve that, unfortunately. You know, anytime you have a player that has potential career-ending injuries in college, who knows what the path in the pros is going to be like, but he's certainly still got crazy potential. So I'm going to try and untap that potential and really develop him. And I think in this Kansas City offense, it's the perfect environment to do so. And then defensively, we're starting George Karloftis and Jermaine Johnson at both defensive end spots. Linebackers stay the same, but the specialist is where things get interesting. As I'm gonna play Nick Bolton as my main sub linebacker, try to get him star dev. Chris Barnes, we signed it behind, and then Willie Gay in behind him. But that is it for season to set up let's go ahead and simulate at least to the midseason mark and see how this team is doing they're six and one so it looks like the changes were very beneficial to the team chargers are one and six not going so great for them i think is a safe way to say that and i do not know the dev traits for both the defensive ends we've drafted i would guess they're both star but i could see maybe giving carl loft a superstar He's a really good player and sometimes a little bit crazy with these dev traits, but both do have star. And then Justin Ross, of course, has normal. But that's still that's still good, right? Carl Loftus is nearly an 80. How's his season going? He's up to 83 power moves. Like to see that. Show me double digit sacks. That'd be insane. He's got one. Oh, okay. So not not really uh <laughs> what I had expected. Jermaine Johnson has three and a half. Are we getting any pressure on the quarterback at all? Or is it just like real life? I mean, that's pretty realistic, I guess. 
However, regardless of pressure numbers, clearly we're playing really well at 6-1. and one, So I'm comfortable just doing what we're doing. I don't need to change anything up. I do want to keep Juan Thornhill. He's the entire reason they didn't draft a safety. Miko Hardman, Tyre Matthew, and Tyree Kill. Those are the big four. I talked a big game about Colin Saunders, but I'm not sure he's going to fit the rebuild. Same thing with Treshawn Wharton. Wharton probably a priority between the two of them just because of age and, of course, overall as well. Tommy Townsend's pretty sick, but Hunter, I don't think, matters too much in Sim. And Rashad Fenton is like a good fourth corner. I don't know. I definitely want the first four, and we'll see about the other bunch. We have a lot more money now because of you no know, Frank Clark eating up like $40 million. But Tyreek wants more money. Tyre Matthew is back, though. And then we got Hardman and Thornhill back as well. The rest, again, I'm not really worried about for right now. Ooh, Anthony Hitchens' awful contract, too. We're just going to cut him. Going to try this 2023 class from YouTube Slick Escobar. And uh, we'll see what that looks like. Still got DJ Uyunglele at number one. So, I don't love it. I don't love it. But that is the draft class we're going to try. And we'll go ahead and simulate to the playoffs now. Huge 2022 going 15 and 2. Said that kind of weird. But Patrick Mahomes had a very good year in which he led the NFL in passing touchdowns with 49, over 5,100 yards rushing. But Edwards Alaire was much better, got the football a lot more. Receiving Justin Ross led the team in receiving yards by two. Tyreek Hill had two more catches and two fewer yards at 11 touchdowns. And Travis Kelsey, the third receiver with 1170 yards in that range and 13 touchdowns. Four receivers with a thousand yards or more craziness. And then defensively, we know we didn't get a ton of pressure, but that's okay because the defense played well enough. Big tackle for loss numbers. And then 12 sacks from Chris Jones led the way. Seven for Jermaine Johnson, four for George Karloftis. Yeah, not crazy numbers there. A lot of picks, it feels like. And overall, the team's playing really, really well. So I don't really feel the need to change anything. Even with the sack numbers being down, we were number three in defensive points per game. I'm staying exactly where we are. Divisional against the Patriots. Big time Chiefs Patriots. And we scored 52 points in a playoff game. Crushed the Patriots. who scored 28. Like, a pretty good game from them, but uh, not yet crushed. Texans in the playoffs now. They're a 79 overall. If they beat us, I'll be upset. 27-21, and the Chiefs are back in the Super Bowl. And who stands in their way but a familiar foe in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Still, I presume, led by Tom Brady, who led the league in passing yards. But this time, this time... It is a very different Chiefs offensive line. It's a very different Chiefs defense. And it should be a very, very competitive game. Justin Ross, not up to star dev. That's a load of crap. That's what that is. Plus one speed, though. There we go. 89. I, uh, all right. Nick Bolton's up to star dev, though. Playing up to an 80. And Super Bowl against the Bucks. They're an 88 overall to our... 88. No, we're an 88. They're an 87. I don't know what I said. Whatever the numbers are, they're on the screen. It's not my forte. Oh, thanks for the update. Am I trying to create more saved data? What does that mean? I didn't... I clicked start the game. Tampa takes an early 7-0 lead, but we answer with a touchdown of our own, making it 7-7. Tampa with a field goal now. We answer with another touchdown. Tampa with another field goal, and we score another touchdown. I like this. Hey, keep kicking field goals, and we keep scoring touchdowns. It's 28-16. 28-23. And they have the ball somehow. Do we just turn over the football? We got Juan Thornhill in the box. That surely can't be good. It's going to be a run. It's play action. And down goes Brady. It's George Karloftis. I don't want to create anything. He's got three sacks. Rookie, first round pick out of Purdue. George Karloftis came in unblocked. Second and goal. Defense needs to come up big. Field goal wouldn't hurt us. Touchdown. 
would obviously give Tampa Bay the lead. It's a number one thing we're looking to avoid. And they're going to go to the flat. Tyron Matthew over. I'm getting real sick of that popping up. I don't know what's happening. Third and goal. I don't really want to run man coverage here, but I don't trust the team in zone. Just want to get in the way a little bit. They're going to the flat. And they're going to be short. God, I'm going to strangle you. Chris Godwin has 15 catches. Fourth and goal from the four. Tampa in gun empty. Trips right. Brady end zone. No one's close. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Who's their kicker? We're at number 19. All right. Well, we are down by a field goal. Just over two minutes to play. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lose it with that. I really am. Let's see what Patrick Mahomes can do. And we had we had all day there. We're just gonna check down. Okay, okay, how do I get rid of this? Can't create. All right, hopefully I took care of that. It's really annoying. I can only imagine if I actually had that popping up every single play in Lions franchise or something. I, I just don't trust Tyreek Hill with the safety. We're taking off with Mahomes. We had a lot of room to run. Just slide, Patrick. Don't pay the... Are, is this a joke? So I guess I have to delete it for the actual game. Madden 22. But I'm so afraid to delete storage. Because what if I accidentally delete my Lions franchise and then my biggest channel series poof ceases to exist so I am worried about that so we're just gonna have to deal for right now and figure that out whenever I don't know at some point probably CEH up the middle for five third down and three not playing for a field goal this is four down territory and that is wide open we got the speed of McCole Hardman he's down to the 24 I'm giving Justin Ross a shot. It's intercepted, of course, because a one-on-one -on -one ball to a six-foot-three receiver is an automatic interception. 50-50 is 0% chance. Third and 13. Please just be a run. Barnes, big hit, no fumble. We're going to get the football back. We're going to get a chance. We're going to get a chance. All right, 18 seconds. We cannot afford to take a sack. Every play has to get out of bounds. Ross... Gonna catch it. See, I, I really get worried about possession catching there because we catch it inbounds. We, uh... Just run to the other side. If we catch it inbounds, we could just go down and get sacked, and that's the game. Or we're not get sacked. We can't, like, snap the ball again. I don't know why I said get sacked. I need to just trust Mahomes on the run. Justin Ross out of bounds. Six seconds. Do we just run it again? I mean, it has to be a shot to the end zone here. It has to be. We could kick the field goal on tie. We're rolling out. End zone. Ross! Touchdown as time expires! We get this crap on the screen! Why does that keep happening? Doesn't matter. Justin Ross catches the game-winning Touchdown as time expires here in the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes cannot believe it. What an unbelievable end to the Super Bowl. May have been better to just kick the field goal and play for the tie. See what overtime has in store. But we play aggressive. We play for the win. And we win the Super Bowl. The Chiefs have won the rematch against the Bucks. Patrick Mahomes has beat Tom Brady. If you want to... Play with that stupid narrative. Uh, Patrick Mahomes can never beat Brady. It's like, all right. But uh, yeah, big time Super Bowl. We got the team, you know, clearly moving in the right direction. So got to love that. And a big time comeback season going 15 and two. Let's try and repeat and then probably call this a video. Lamar won MVP. Kenny Pickett with the Giants wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Kayvon Thibodeau. With the Texans wins Defensive Rookie of the Year, Miles Garrett, Defensive Player of the Year. But we don't need an MVP. We don't need any of that fancy stuff because we won the Super Bowl. And that's as fancy as it gets, actually. So, okay, so we got to bring back Tyreek Hill. What did he say? He said, bonus could be better. We just got to improve the bonus over 10, maybe, and he'll sign. What about that? All right, Tyreek Hill returns. Rashad Fenton. He could see before, I guess. That's fine. He's not interested in signing. Well, okay, cool. And Tommy Townsend's back as well. 
All right, what do we want in free agency here? I don't even know. Maybe, maybe just best player available to upgrade the team. The biggest position of need right now, I mean, it could be defensive end. Jermaine Johnson's a 77, but he's good. Could be linebacker still. But I don't really feel like we're desperate for an upgrade anywhere. Just kind of depends what free agency has to offer. Now, Jeffrey Simmons would play D-tackle for me. AJ Brown could be good. I don't know. I don't think anyone's really standing out. Like, maybe Bobby Wagner. Just because, like, final season, right? We'll just see if we can get a veteran guy and really just make a huge impact. Maybe we'll go after Bobby Wagner. So we didn't get Bobby Wagner, but we did get Jeffrey Simmons. I figured that the upgrade at D-tackle was more important than at linebacker just because of where Derek Nottie is his player. You can see 83. He's really a 79 and 27 years old, whereas Jeffrey Simmons, who will not be playing right end, I don't care what the scheme fit says. He will not be doing that. He is only 26, but an 89, so significantly better. And that plays up into the 90s, and it'll be even higher at defensive tackle. Yeah, he goes up to a 92, playing up to a 96. This was a worthwhile acquisition. So we pick at number 32 overall in the draft. And we'll see what's available. We'll see what's available. I mean, we could just go crazy and take Tank Bigsby, right? Just get a really awesome backup running back. And he might not even be the best running back at Auburn right now, Jarquez Hunter, who is uh, not gonna be draft eligible for a few years. I think he's a true freshman, as I say this in uh, 2021. I had to check the year. That's concerning. I guess Bijan's gone and Bijan Robinson. But there is there is Keelan Robinson, no relation. What do I what do I even want, dude? There's Azizo Jalari's brother, BJ. Doesn't really fit what I want. Have I taken Justin Flo before? He's pretty awesome. We could maybe use a linebacker. Give me Justin Flo. See what he's all about. 88 speed, star or better development, B block shed. A zone coverage is crazy. All right. If you've watched any of Justin Flo play at Oregon, you know, he is pretty awesome when healthy. And what else would I want? We'll go with Keelan Robinson from Texas. All right. Why not? Hook him horns, right? Yeehaw. Yeehaw. Is that how you say it? You get to have all the air come out of your mouth and lungs when you say that. I guess the air isn't really stored in the mouth. We're just going to simulate to the end of the draft. Justin Flo is only a 69. Hmm. Yeah, awareness is really bringing that down. Tackle's pretty low, too. Awareness and play rec. Going to keep the specialist the same as last year, except for the addition of Jeffrey Simmons. Keep Justin Ross in the slot, trying to develop him. And the rest seems really, really good. This is a fantastic team. Like, Lucas Nyang is the lowest overall by a considerable portion, and he's fine. He's fine. Might be near an 80 at the end of this season. But I think we should just simulate to the playoffs and see how this team's going. 14-3, another playoff appearance for this Chiefs team, and a really, really good record at that. Brock Purdy threw for over 5,000 yards. So did Bryce Young as a rookie. Who drafted Brock Purdy? If there's one thing I'm confident of, I, it's Brock Purdy not throwing for 5,000 yards in 2023. Bucks playbook is why. That's it. That's it. Bryce Young, amazing rookie year. And Patrick Mahomes just still probably the best quarterback in the league. Jalen Hurts for 4,800? Okay. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, I mean, lower yards per carry. You don't love the season. It looks good traditionally, but it's not really that great of a year. Receiving Tyree Kill was one of four receivers over 1K again. Justin Ross, 14 touchdowns. He's developing quite nicely. And then defensively, we have Chris Barnes at 102 tackles, five for loss. George Karloftis, 15 tackles for loss, 10 sacks for him, 10 for Jeffrey Simmons, 14 for Chris Jones, and we had eight and a half as well from Jermaine Johnson. Only half a sack for the rest of the entire team. Okay. Still a bunch of interceptions, though. You like to see that. Plus two power moves for Jeffrey Simmons. That's up to 85. 
yeah he's becoming pretty dominant tennessee in the divisional we are plus 10 overall but we know a simulation that might not mean anything but it, it did this time 42 24 the 85 overall colts in the divisional okay that is a pretty good looking team just you know from a quick glance at their overall ratings should be an 86 probably with 85 offense 87 defense but whatever need to beat them to get to the super bowl though and we are there back-to-back -back super bowl appearances kansas city carolina this could be a good one carolina playbooks are very very good usually justin ross you finally star dev he sure is so justin ross star dev is nice now he's kind of been like the rookie focal point willie gay's up to superstar development by the way rest of the team is looking very very nice george karloft is playing up to an 88 we're gonna pretend that's his actual rating 90 power moves very very good and he had three sacks in the super bowl last year so why not this year why not this year super bowl chiefs panthers let's get another win finally on the board we're down six nothing but now we take a 14 to 6 lead carolina not backing down though it's a 21 13 game 28 13 another touchdown i think would end it but that is not what happens end of the third quarter let's just jump in for a quick drive entering the green zone we're on the 35 do i just trust travis kelsey yeah quick throw how is that not completed that's ah, still gonna be on the screen okay all right i don't i don't know man like it, i don't want to risk deleting my big franchise series file been blocking from travis kelsey but at the same time this is intolerable that's open clyde edwards a lair out of the backfield touchdown Clyde Edwards Elaire ran that route like a receiver. It was beautiful. Oh, we got the ball back on offense. I'm um, wait, do we? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what just happened. The uh must have flipped for the fourth quarter. Fourth and 16. Game essentially on the line for Carolina down 42-20. And they're gonna take a deep shot. One Thornhill gonna take the football away interception game over kansas city will likely win back-to-back -back super bowl should i do one more season man five turnovers for carolina good lord should i do one more season try and three peat let's do it quick off season i'm down for that as we just end the game here last play of the game we don't really even need to snap the ball but why not right what's the downside what's the downside nothing uh game over super bowl over we have repeated patrick mahomes has won his third super bowl is what this is so we're just doing well we're doing real well man five touchdown performance for patrick mahomes as well zero interceptions 362 yards passing good stuff also apparently maybe what i have to do is just delete every non-essential item i have within madden and maybe that'll do it get that thing off the screen I'll do another season. I'll do another season. 2023 season recap has Mike McCarthy winning coach of the year. The Cowboys, who I don't see in the Super Bowl. So saying, where am I in that? Alvin Kamara, MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. Aaron Donald, Defensive Player of the Year. Bryce Young, Offensive Rookie of the Year. And Miles Murphy, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Give me a real quick offseason. What do I have to sign here? Oh, some big players. Need the first four. Willie Gay through Chris Jones. All right, got Clyde edwards alaire LeJerry Sneed, and Willie Gay. Chris Jones said no, so we're just going to franchise tag him. It's a big franchise tag, but we have to. NFL draft time, of course, speaking at 32. I don't know anything about these guys in the draft. I haven't done any scouting at all, which coincidentally, if I had done scouting, I'd be in the same exact spot. No change at all. I would still know nothing. What position do we have our main scout even looking at? I said there was some malice to looking at. I don't I don't know why I said it like that. Uh, everything's 40. Where's the 82? Left outside linebacker. Is that what we have at 80%? Is it left outside linebacker? What a joke. All right. Do we know anything about this guy? Rodney Kitchens? Don't know. Block shedding or pursuit. 
Got B finesse moves. Okay. A injury. Wow. Good. It's like Barry Bulware. How often do you see a tight end up top here? Maybe he's good. Uh, oh, okay. Well, we know he's got A awareness. Could make his overall quite high. A stamina. Wow. He's got normal dev. I mentioned that. It's pretty cool. Round two. We're going to take a running back this time. Dylan McCain. Sure. Sure he is. All right. He's He looks pretty well-rounded from his athletic ratings. Star, better dev. Sure. McCain is a 73 overall. Not too bad. What was the first guy I took? Was it defense? No, he's a tight end. That's right. That's right. He's a 72. 71, even. So, okay. Let's go ahead and swap Bolton and Gay. And we got our D-line rocking. Justin Ross can stay in the slot. That's fine to me. And that is the team final season. Simulate straight to the playoffs. And I will see you there. 15 and 2 again. As you can see, we're negative 16.6 million. That's the franchise tag from Chris Jones. And Patrick Mahomes had a very good year. 5,200 yards led the NFL. 45 touchdowns to only six picks. Clyde Edwards Alaire was back. Elaire. And then receiving Justin Ross. Over 1,400 yards and 15 touchdowns. He'll certainly go up to superstar development. That's why receivers can have, you know, normal dev and still be fine. Because they can go up so easily. Travis Kelsey, second big season for him. Tyreek Hill as well, just the touchdowns weren't anything crazy. And then defensively, 14 sacks for Jeffrey Simmons, 12 for Jones, 10 for Karloftis, 7 for Jermaine Johnson. We have 22 tackles for loss for Jones. My D-line's getting after it, even if they're not posting crazy sack numbers. And then a number of players just had one interception, and that's it. But third offense in terms of yards, what was our scoring offense? First, scoring defense, first we average 31 points per game and only allow 20 points per game. So very, very good stuff. Looking to win our third Super Bowl in a row. Got to beat the Bengals to get there. We're 92 overall to their 84. And we boo. We beat them. We do. We boo. The words, whatever, dude. 86 overall for the Browns. They went 10 and 7, snuck into the playoffs and beat us. So that is the end of our journey here. Two out of three Super Bowls. Justin Ross is going to be a superstar. He's 84 overall. Let's go ahead and check out the final team. Really, really good team. Really fun to actually have success. So I'm, you know, all in favor of that. And as you can see here, Justin Ross does have superstar dev now playing up to an 88. The entire team just looks amazing. Obviously, we know what we get with Patrick Mahomes. Clyde Edwards E. Lair is up to a 94th morale. The entire O line looking beefy. I mean, Trey Smith up to an 89. These are all going to be with morale, by the way. Humphrey, 90. Orlando Brown Jr., 93. Who would have thought that Joe Tooney would be the lowest overall lineman, uh, with the exception of Lucas Nyong? And then defensively, Nick Bolton up to superstar dev. George Karloftis up to superstar dev at a 90 overall. Things are just coming along really, really nicely. Cornerbacks did the job. What can you say? Two out of three Super Bowl victories and an AFC Championship appearance. Big time stuff. But that is going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button for more videos like this, more franchise and NFL content all together. As you could probably tell, I'm pretty passionate about the NFL draft and college football every year. So more of that type of content to come in the future as well. Whether it's just mock drafts or you know, more just talking about some of these players. And I do that, especially on my podcast with wheels and not the expert. That link is down in the description. It's called the couch quarterback podcast. You can find iTunes, Spotify, Twitter links, YouTube links for the video version. Everything's down there, but thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.